Why did the United States invade Iraq in 2003? It's a question that has haunted global political discourse for over two decades, a question that has proven to be as complex as it is contentious. To understand this, we must first take a step back and consider the official reasons cited by the U.S. government. At the forefront was the assertion of the existence of weapons of mass destruction, or WMDs. The U.S. government held steadfast in its claim that Iraq, under the rule of Saddam Hussein, was manufacturing these weapons, posing an immediate threat to global security. Another key argument put forth was Iraq's supposed links to international terrorism, particularly to the infamous Al-Qaeda. The Bush administration maintained that Saddam Hussein was harboring and supporting these terrorist networks, thereby necessitating immediate intervention. However, these reasons were not without controversy. The presence of WMDs in Iraq, a cornerstone of the U.S.'s justification for invasion, was later discredited. The alleged links to terrorism were also heavily disputed, with critics arguing that the evidence was tenuous at best. These contradictions have fueled a long-standing debate about the motivations and implications of the U.S.'s decision to invade Iraq. Was it a genuine effort to neutralize a global threat? Or was it a strategic move to assert dominance in the Middle East? And so, we find ourselves grappling with the question that lingers. Why did the United States invade Iraq in 2003? As we delve deeper into the events leading up during and after the invasion, we aim to shed more light on this complex issue. The path to the invasion was not a sudden one, but a culmination of years of tension and conflict. Let's delve into the past and uncover the events that led to this controversial military action. The history of U.S.-Iraq relations has been fraught with conflict and tension long before the invasion of 2003. The Gulf War, sanctions regime, and the infamous 9-11 attacks all played significant roles in shaping the dynamics between the two nations. The Gulf War, triggered by Iraq's invasion of Kuwait in 1990, marked the beginning of strained relations. The United States, leading a coalition of 35 nations, launched Operation Desert Storm to liberate Kuwait. This swift military action resulted in a decisive victory for the coalition forces, but left Saddam Hussein's regime intact. This was a decision that would later come under scrutiny. In the aftermath of the Gulf War, the United Nations imposed a rigorous regime of economic sanctions on Iraq. The sanctions, intended to coerce Iraq into complying with UN resolutions, had a devastating impact on the country's economy and its people. The regime, however, remained defiant. The 9-11 attacks in 2001 marked a turning point in U.S. foreign policy. In the aftermath of these devastating attacks, the Bush administration turned its focus towards the Middle East, identifying it as the epicenter of global terrorism. Iraq, with its history of conflict with the U.S. and its alleged possession of weapons of mass destruction, was singled out. The run-up to the invasion was characterized by a concerted effort by the Bush administration to build a case for war. The argument was centered around two main points, Iraq's alleged possession of weapons of mass destruction and its supposed links to Al-Qaeda. The intelligence used to support these claims was later discredited, but at the time, it was used to drive a narrative of imminent threat. The controversial intelligence presented to the United Nations by Secretary of State Colin Powell in February 2003 was a pivotal moment. Powell's speech, based on faulty intelligence, claimed that Iraq had an active weapons of mass destruction program. This would later prove to be one of the biggest intelligence failures in recent history. Despite widespread international opposition and massive global protests, the Bush administration remained resolute in its decision. The stage was thus set for one of the most controversial military actions of the 21st century. The drums of war were beating, and the world was on the cusp of a conflict that would have far-reaching consequences, not just for Iraq and the United States, but for the entire world. The stage was thus set for one of the most controversial military actions of the 21st century. On March 20, 2003, the invasion began. A day that would etch itself into the annals of history. A day that marked the start of a conflict that would resonate across the globe for years to come. The US-led coalition embarked on a military strategy known as shock and awe, a doctrine based on using overwhelming power dominant battlefield awareness and maneuvers, and spectacular displays of force to paralyze the enemy's perception and crush its will to fight. The intention was to stun the Iraqi military into quick submission. The bombardment was relentless, with the night sky of Baghdad lit up by the fireworks of destruction. Within weeks, the coalition forces had advanced into the heart of Iraq. 
The fall of Baghdad, the capital city, was an iconic moment. The image of the statue of Saddam Hussein, the iron-fisted dictator, being toppled in Ferdo Square, symbolized the collapse of the Ba'athist regime. The world watched as the once-feared leader's effigy was brought down, a symbol of power reduced to rubble. Yet, the invasion was not without controversy. The coalition that spearheaded the assault was largely made up of forces from the United States and the United Kingdom with support from several other countries. However, notably absent was a United Nations mandate. The international community was divided. The invasion was seen by many as a violation of international law. While the military campaign was swift, the capture of Saddam Hussein was not immediate. The former dictator managed to evade capture for several months, adding another layer of complexity to the invasion. His eventual capture in December 2003 was touted as a significant victory. Found in a small, concealed hole near his hometown of Tikrit, the man once hailed as the Lion of Babylon was reduced to a disheveled figure, far removed from the image of power he once projected. But let's not forget, the invasion was not a simple black-and-white scenario. It was a chessboard of political maneuvers, strategic gambits, and unexpected revelations. The justification for the invasion, including allegations of weapons of mass destruction and links to terrorist organizations, was later discredited, adding a layer of controversy to an already contentious military action. The coalition forces achieved their objective of toppling the Hussein regime. But the victory was not without cost. The invasion triggered a wave of insurgency, sectarian violence, and civil unrest that would engulf Iraq for years to come. The infrastructure was devastated, the economy crumbled, and the social fabric of the nation was torn apart. The victory was, in many ways, Pyrrhic. In retrospect, the invasion was a momentous event, not just for Iraq, but for the world. It raised questions about the use of military force, the role of international institutions, and the consequences of intervention. The swift military victory, however, did not mark the end of the conflict but rather the beginning of a long and tumultuous period. The invasion of Iraq was a Pandora's box, and once opened, it released a storm of events that would shape the future of the Middle East and have far-reaching impacts globally. The echoes of the invasion still resonate, a reminder of a chapter in history that continues to unfold. The fall of Saddam's regime left a power vacuum that would have far-reaching consequences. The post-invasion period in Iraq was marked by a fierce insurgency, a surge in sectarian violence and a civil war that would last for years. The end of a totalitarian regime didn't lead to the flowering of democracy as had been hoped by many, but instead, it led to a chaotic and violent struggle for power. The insurgency began soon after the fall of Saddam Hussein. Resistance was initially sporadic but it soon coalesced into a formidable force. The insurgents were a diverse group, comprising former Ba'athists, nationalists and jihadists among others. Their common goal was to expel the foreign forces and to resist the new political order. As the insurgency raged, sectarian violence also escalated. Iraq's diverse ethnic and religious communities which had coexisted, albeit uneasily, under Saddam's rule, were now at loggerheads. The Sunni and Shia communities in particular were embroiled in a deadly conflict. Each side committed appalling acts of violence against the other, leading to a cycle of revenge and retribution that seemed to have no end. This sectarian conflict gradually morphed into a civil war. The government, dominated by Shias, was unable to establish control over the entire country. Various militias and insurgent groups effectively controlled large swaths of territory. The civil war was brutal and merciless, with civilians often bearing the brunt of the violence. The impact on the Iraqi people was devastating. The civilian casualty rate was alarmingly high. Estimates of the number of deaths vary widely, but it's clear that hundreds of thousands of Iraqis lost their lives as a direct result of the conflict. Many more were injured, traumatized or forced to flee their homes. The country's infrastructure, already strained by years of sanctions and neglect, was further destroyed. Basic services like electricity, water and healthcare were severely disrupted, exacerbating the suffering of the Iraqi people. Iraq's economy, once one of the most advanced in the Middle East, was in shambles. The oil industry, the backbone of the economy, was plagued by corruption and mismanagement. Billions of dollars were siphoned off through corrupt deals, depriving the country of much-needed resources for reconstruction and development. The social fabric of the country was torn apart. Trust between different communities was eroded, replaced by fear and suspicion. Many Iraqis were disillusioned and angry, 
feeling that they had been betrayed by those who had promised them freedom and prosperity. In the midst of this chaos and suffering, the question of why the U.S. invaded Iraq continued to resonate. The rationale for the invasion including the claims of weapons of mass destruction and ties to Al-Qaeda was discredited. Yet the consequences of the invasion were all too real for the Iraqi people. More than a decade after the invasion, its legacy is still being felt. The invasion of Iraq, a conflict that spanned from 2003 to 2011, was one of the most consequential events of the early 21st century. Its effects were felt not just in Iraq, but around the globe, shaping the world we live in today. In the heart of the Middle East, the invasion set off a cascade of events that caused regional instability and gave rise to new threats. The power vacuum left by the fall of Saddam Hussein's government was quickly filled by various factions vying for control, leading to a protracted insurgency and civil war. Among the groups that emerged from this chaos was ISIS, a radical Islamist group that seized large parts of Iraq and Syria and declared a so-called caliphate. The rise of ISIS was a direct consequence of the invasion and the subsequent mismanagement of the post-war period. It has since been largely defeated, but the group still poses a threat and its ideology continues to inspire extremists around the world. The invasion and its aftermath also had a profound impact on Iraq's society and economy. An estimated $150 billion of Iraq's oil money was reportedly stolen through corrupt deals following the invasion. This grand-scale corruption coupled with the widespread destruction of infrastructure has left Iraq's economy in shambles and its people struggling with unemployment and lack of basic services. Internationally, the invasion has had a lasting impact on the perception and conduct of U.S. foreign policy. The controversy over the reasons for the invasion, particularly the discredited claims of weapons of mass destruction and ties to Al-Qaeda, has cast a long shadow over U.S. credibility on the world stage. It has also fueled debates on the use of military force and the pursuit of regime change as tools of foreign policy. Moreover, the lack of accountability for the decision to invade Iraq is a bleak reminder of the impunity that often surrounds actions of powerful states. Notwithstanding the significant human cost and the destabilizing effects of the invasion, those who championed it have largely escaped repercussions. This has sparked calls for greater accountability and introspection in how we engage with the decisions of the past. The invasion of Iraq is more than just a chapter in history. It is a cautionary tale of the consequences of rash decisions, the dangers of misinformation, and the importance of accountability in international relations. It serves as a stark reminder of the devastating effects of war and the long shadow it casts over the lives of those caught in its wake. As we reflect on the legacy of the invasion, we must also look to the future. The challenges that Iraq faces today, from political instability to economic hardship, from sectarian tensions to the threat of extremism, are deeply rooted in the events of the past. Addressing these challenges will require not just a recognition of the mistakes made, but a commitment to learning from them and ensuring they are not repeated. The invasion of Iraq remains a defining moment in contemporary history, its lessons still relevant today. So, why did the U.S. invade Iraq? A question that has echoed across the globe for the past two decades. The journey we embarked on today, revisiting the events leading up to the invasion, the invasion itself, the aftermath, and its lasting legacy, all bring us back to this pivotal question. Over the course of this exploration, we've delved into the myriad of reasons given at the time of the invasion. We've examined the rhetoric about weapons of mass destruction, the alleged ties to Al-Qaeda, and the mission to liberate the Iraqi people from the tyranny of Saddam Hussein's Ba'athist government. Each of these reasons was presented with conviction, painting a picture of a necessary intervention. Yet, as we've also seen, subsequent revelations have cast long shadows over these justifications. The weapons of mass destruction were never found, the links to Al-Qaeda were discredited, and the liberation narrative was tarnished by a prolonged insurgency, civil war, and a descent into sectarian violence. The story of the Iraq invasion is, in many ways, a story of misguided intentions, faulty intelligence, and unforeseen consequences. As we moved into the aftermath of the invasion, we saw a nation left weakened and divided. The death toll was staggering with estimates ranging from 150,000 to over a million. The political instability, sectarian tensions, and rise in violence that followed the invasion have had lasting impacts. 
Iraq's struggle to regain stability continues to this day, with corruption and misappropriated funds further hampering efforts for recovery and progress. And what of the legacy of the invasion? It's a legacy that's far-reaching, impacting not just Iraq and its people, but also international relations and domestic politics in the US and UK. The Iraq War has become a cautionary tale, a stark reminder of the potential costs of military intervention. In revisiting this question, why did the US invade Iraq? We encourage you to form your own opinions based on the information presented. The complexities of the Iraq invasion are not easily distilled into simple answers. It's a narrative filled with shades of gray, a confluence of geopolitical, ideological, and personal factors that contributed to a decision that has shaped the course of history. While the question may never be fully answered, understanding the complexities of the Iraq invasion is crucial to preventing similar tragedies in the future. Let this exploration serve as a reminder of the importance of critical thinking, of questioning narratives, and of seeking truth amidst the complexities of our global landscape.